applicants, here we are in the coding department. So the candidate on the holding here is a good cut, also on the neck as well. So right door cut is also known as a flat cut, given its nature is very flat, it's very broad, and then the wedge cut is very nice and precise. We have two different cuts. All the wheels that you see being used, they're all diamond crested wheels. Not only because of abrasive materials such as the crystal work, but also the polishing process that they use to sharpen the wheel. Because as you can imagine, they're working on these wheels for so many hours during the day, that the wheel will eventually get done. So they'll apply the rock to the wheel, and we'll take away a layer of the seal, and then bring up the diamonds inside the wheel to the surface, to get a nice fine cut. Our glass, they need to apply a certain amount of pressure to the wheel with the glass. If they go too hard, they'll go straight through it. If they go too soft, it won't show up after it's been dipped. So what the acid will do, it will take away an layer of the crystal. If that coat was too shallow, it would just fade that coat away. So they need to go about two and a quarter inches deep, give or take, depends on the piece, into the glass, to get their perfect cut. Now they have the blue cabinets, you'll see all the different types of wheels. There's various different types of wedge coat wheels, various different types of right door wheels. Uh, so these wheels can determine the width and the depth of the cut. Then over here on my right hand side, we have two machines, and they're not on at the moment because they're just other machines. But these machines would have been used, uh, are used, for the likes of extremely heavy pieces that cannot be held for so many hours during the day, and as well for precision cuts. So the machines are there to help out the craftsmen for anything that can be done by hand. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Then we'll talk about what goes on in the sculpting department down below. Okay? I'll let everyone know when we're going down. His hands would have been separate to his arms, to his body, to his feet, to his legs, to his head. The way that they put them together is that they use a lock type glue. They'll apply the glue to the crystal, put it underneath a UV light. Then it'll take about 60 seconds for this glue to activate. Once it's activated, it's stronger than any other bond. The point of perspective of how strong the bond is, the crystal itself will actually break before the glue will. It will never age, it will never yellow, and it's completely see-through. So it's perfect for crystal making. Well, not everything is glued together, so it's the American flag there that can be removed and will be shipped separately. Is it quite fragile? And then with the telephone, the telephone receiver can actually be picked up. Over here on my right hand side, you have the Gibson guitar that's being worked on. You know Okay, folks, and uh, here we are in the engraving department. Our engravers use three different types of engraving. They use copper wheeling, diamond buzzing, and also sandblasting. So copper wheeling is used for the depth of the piece. So the deeper that you engrave with the copper wheel, the more three it's going to look. The more three it's going to look. And diamond buzzing is used for small details on the piece. I can like draw it onto the piece as well. So Pat over here, he's working away with the depth buzzer. The entirely sandblasting is used for like some text logos and outlines and designs. So the mask up the entire piece of masking tape and a stencil, so you can see the bone over there. Actually engrave any parts that are left off by that stencil. So I'm just gonna find out a few different things here. So down below on the table, you may have seen it already, but our water for coat of arms. Our coat of arms can then later on laid out his altar when he sadly passed away. He was also the pastor for the fire department. Now this incorporates everything that we've seen so far. So the towers behind, they've all been blown and sandblasted, and in front it has been cut, sculpted, and engraved. So my many different craftsmen took about six and a half months to make. This is just a replica. The original is actually in New York, at the 9 Left Museum, at Ground Zero. And it's much larger in scale than this one here. The one in New York City is about two times the size. It's much larger. 
BFO set is the final department of the tour. So whenever we are ready, we're going to group up in the hallway here behind me. 